Welcome to the Elite Body to YouTube channel where we tackle your common fat loss as well as muscle gain questions and promote the benefits of using the latest and greatest fitness technology so you can reach your body goal destination more efficiently. Subscribe to our channel and check out our blog. Our blog has so many helpful articles that I know you will love. The blog link is below in the description box. All right, Data Fit Crew, in this video, we'll be discussing what body fat is, dun, 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 what body fat is made of, that's rather important. Do some people have more body fat than others? And how does your body lose fat when you lose weight? Hmm. So what is body fat? Body fat, also known as adipose tissue, helps keep our bodies warm as well as cushion and protects us. There are actually two types of fat, brown and white. The function of brown fat is to generate heat and is mainly located on our backs. It also burns quite a few calories in order to keep us warm. That's why brown fat is good to have. On the other hand, white fat, its function is to store. And white fat is typically depicted as yellow because it can actually be yellow in color. The storage capacity is really dictated on how much extra energy we consume. Our fat cells can expand if we're not expending all of the energy that we're intaking in the form of food. Now it's not to say that having white fat is a bad thing. We actually need white fat because very much like brown fat, it helps insulate and protects us. But white fat is so common in our bodies and it's the predominant fat in our bodies and it's typically the fat we wanna lose and we don't wanna put ourselves in a position where we can easily gain or create white fat by consuming more food than we expend. Additionally, our fat cells are expanding. So we're not even just creating, we're also expanding, you guys. So if you want to learn how much you should be eating in order to lose, gain, or maintain a rusty metabolic rate test, which I will link the video to below, and I discuss this in great detail, is a test you wanna consider having for yourself. Fat is important, but fat in the wrong places can be detrimental to your health. Having excess white fat in your midsection, lovingly referred to as a spare tire, is not a good thing. Men and women should make sure their waist measurements are low. At Elite Body Data, we have clients complete a Psycho 3D body scan to ensure that our female clients' waist is no greater than 35 inches and our male clients don't have the waist over 40 inches. This is because those who have higher waist measurements are those who are typically at greater risk for heart disease, cancer, type two diabetes, and more. This is why you should get your body fat tested as well. We use the body metric ultrasound device to measure our clients' body fat. I suggest you do the same or use a similar device. It is recommended that a healthy range of body fat for men is between 14 and 24%, while women is between 20 to 30%. And did you know that having more white fat, excess white fat, tends to put your metabolism in a compromising position. This is why diet and exercise efforts should be concentrated on fat loss and not scale weight loss. I'll do a video in the future explaining how exercise and diet impact brown and white fat, so keep an eye out. So what is fat made of? Body fat tissue is not just pure fat, you guys. Within a fat cell, we actually have triglycerides that make up 70 to 87% of a fat cell. The rest is water and protein. So when we're talking about fat loss, what we're really talking about is shrinking fat cells, i.e. losing triglycerides within those cells. The thing is, we need fat cells in order to live. That's why we can't just burn them off and they disappear. We just don't need those cells to be bigger than necessary. Do some people have more fat than others? Let's dig into this. The average human has around the same number of fat cells as his or her neighbor. There's some people who have genetic anomalies that result in them having more fat cells when they're born. The reason you may not look like your neighbor is the difference in the size of those cells. Or as we learn, the amount of triglycerides is the more formal way of referring to it. Reporter Michael Hopkins of Nature.com, which is an international journal of science, mentioned in his article that I'll link below that Christy Spaulding of the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm found during her research that the number of fat cells remain pretty constant in adulthood. They also found that it is not the same cells persisting forever. That would be kind of strange, wouldn't it? There is a dynamic process of cell death and replenishment. Adults who gain or lose weight through changes in size of the fat cells, not the amount of those fat cells. That means 
If you are a person who was a little overweight as a child, you may find it a little bit more difficult to shift your weight later in life compared to those who piled on pounds as adults. So when you decide to grind hard to look better, here's the deal. You aren't grinding hard to kill fat cells. You can't kill fat cells with diet and exercise. Scientifically speaking, the role of nutrition and exercise is to shrink fat cells, in particular the triglycerides that are within them. So when someone tells you they'll help you kill the fat, lose the fat and keep it off, or any other variation of this, it's not really true. Unless they're talking about using a medical grade device to quite literally kill fat cells, yes, devices like that exist, you should really reframe your mind and focus on using proper diet and exercise to shrink fat cells. Working out with weights, doing cardio, aids in that process. Because here's the thing, the body naturally continues to turn over new fat cells, like red blood cells, like white blood cells, like skin cells. So please don't demonize fat. We need it in our bodies. We just don't need excess amounts. So what happens to fat when you lose weight? The question everyone's dying to know. Well, the University of New South Wales found that most people assume we convert fat into energy. Turns out it's not the case. To lose weight, triglycerides that make up fat need to be broken down, and in that process of breaking them down is called oxidation. Just a fancy way of saying burned up. During oxidation, fat is converted into carbon dioxide and water. When someone loses fat, a majority is exhaled. You heard correct, exhaled. The lungs aid in weight loss by expelling that carbon dioxide. The rest leaves our body in the form of water, so that means you can excrete those converted fats through urine, feces, sweat, tears, etc. And then our fat cells shrink during that process of weight loss. Going back to Christy Spaulding at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, her research found that we can get a little bit more validation about the point that I just mentioned. She actually examined 20 people who had gastric bypass surgery. When they measured those 20 people who were obese and had their stomach stapled, they measured those volunteers two years later and they found no reduction in fat cells. The subject still had over 80 billion individual fat cells in their body. Spalding and her colleagues had calculated that they lost on average an 18% of their weight, but the volume of those fat cells they were reduced rather than the number of fat cells, so that's why they were able to lose 18%. So let's get to shrinking excess fat cells, okay? Until next time.